Hello and welcome to the PC security channel Malwarebytes 4. Apparently it's been redesigned inside and out. It's smarter, faster, lighter than before. I'm especially interested about the inside part because if you've been watching TPSC, you've probably noticed that the standalone protection for Malwarebytes was never really up there, but maybe that has changed with this version. We'll go ahead and run through our usual test process and let's see how it does. But before that, I'm going to show you what the new UI looks like. Not one of the most configurable products, let's say, but um, overall, I think the UI is really nice. I like the layout. I'm not sure I like the theme and the styling a bit. It's just personal preference. But yeah, in terms of usability, this is an A+, so no complaints about the UI redesign. The scan interface is also very neat. I have no real problems here. We've got the scheduler and reports. And we've still got the different categories like checking for updates, scanning memories, scanning startup items, and so on. So you know which stage of the scan it's at. I was a bit concerned that they might have removed this, but they haven't, so it's all good. Anyway, this is a clean system. We don't need to complete the scan. What we do need to do, however, is turn off the protection for a very short period of time, just so I can grab my files without a lot of hassle. The easiest way to do it, of course, is using the taskbar. So you can just turn malware protection off right here. And I believe that should be good. Now, if you're not familiar, the way I do these tasks is I grab a lot of malware files that have been collected in the last few hours. This time we have 1718, but I try to get at least 1500 threats for this stage. Now in here we've got ransomware, trojans, PUPs, all sorts of things. That's a mix up of the worst stuff. And now we're going to execute all of this on the system. In order to automate that, we use a script called Malix. And all it does is it goes through the files one by one with a bit of a delay, starts each of them as an individual process. So it's kind of like the equivalent of if these threats were spawned, let's say by some kind of remote execution vulnerability or just simply through a different application like the web browser. Although any specific rules that they might have for web browsers won't come into the picture because we're using a completely different script as the attack factor here. Now at this stage, I will turn the real-time protection back on so you can see that it's happy, everything's good, our computer is protected, but now we'll figure out how well protected it is. You do have a prompt just to make sure that real-time protection's turned on, in this case it is, so let the testing begin. I'm also going to leave Task Manager open with CPU usage highlighted just so you can see how it scales throughout the test. All right, first file was blocked. That's good to know. So it is working. The only thing that I find a little bit concerning is that this is taking a while. Now, interestingly, it looks like each thread is being classified as missed by the script, even when it's being blocked by malware bytes. Now, this is likely because of the way their engine works. Maybe they're acting very late into the execution process. But the good thing is we are seeing the items appear in quarantine. So at the end, we can just recalculate the detection ratio based on how many were actually blocked. Another thing to notice is the test is really slow, so I'm not sure what they're doing to analyze the files, but whatever it is, it's taking quite a while for each of the files. Despite the fact that we have pretty significant CPU usage, it's not as high as I've seen with some other products, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. It does seem like their engine works very differently to most of the products I've tested. All right, 12 minutes into the test and we're starting to have problems. So as you can see on the desktop, there are a bunch of icons appearing, disappearing, that's constantly being created and deleted. I did notice a lot of websites being blocked by Malwarebytes. It's possible that it's trying to block certain connections. They're trying to access more malware, maybe reach out to a command and control server. But at this point, the system is not very responsive and it's a complete mess. So I don't know how long this is going to continue, but as long as it's going, I'm good with it. It's not like I'm getting tortured, it's just my poor VM. <laughs> Also, again, for new viewers, I would just like to clarify that it's not standard for systems to be unresponsive at this stage. 
We've had tests where it just goes through smoothly to 100% with no issues whatsoever. I mean, I don't really care about the fact that the proactive detection isn't going up because they're detecting the threats late into the execution process. I mean, fine. You can just as well blame it on me for not writing the script a certain way because the purpose of the script is to detect when malware is blocked. But the fact that there is malware on the system and it's creating stuff that, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that is clearly indication of malware being missed. 20 minutes in, and if I had to guess, I would say things are not looking too good. But they might improve, so we'll let it keep running. Okay, so if things weren't looking good before, well, it's only gotten worse from there. So 23 minutes in, there's really not much for me to do here. It looks like the system is completely frozen and dead. We've got visual artifacts and glitches. Looks like this is a GG. <laughs> so what I'm going to do right now is we'll reset the system. But needless to say, the test did not execute successfully. And this is a very rare occurrence. OK, so after a lot of strange crashes, the system did finally boot back up. So that's good news. Now I'll get rid of uh, the folder of malware. I think we've had enough of that. Or the system's had enough of that. We're noticing some more detections from malware bytes. This time it's the machine learning, which is interesting to see. It's detecting something from the desktop and it says that you must reboot to complete the quarantine process. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There's more stuff in program data. A lot of things are launching at startup and I think that's probably what's triggering the detections here. Even at this stage, we're already dealing with reactive protection. So proactively, a lot of the threats were actually allowed to start and, well, do what they do. Okay, now we're still getting detection. So it seems like maybe the removal failed or maybe the malware is just continuously spawning new executables and Malwarebytes doesn't know how to deal with it. There's more stuff in app data. You can see these random executables popping up everywhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll do a quick scan with Hitman Pro. Let's see what's going on here. I will also try and run CCleaner if that's even possible. So there's more stuff detected, more reboots required, but I fear this might be an endless loop. We might just keep rebooting until the end of time. So instead, let's just take a look at what's already on the system. Now keep in mind, these tests are proactive tests. So I'm not testing how good the product is at removing malware. I'm testing how good it is at preventing malware from infecting the system in the first place. And it doesn't seem like Malwarebytes did a very good job of that. I don't think we even need to wait for the scan to finish here. We've got a ton of active stuff. There's a ransomware here. Although I don't know if our data is encrypted. Let's go and take a look. So if we look at our documents, our data is still all right. So the ransomware, if it's active, hasn't actually finished the encryption process. Or maybe it's just got intercepted with the communication in order to get the keys from the command and control server. But again, some ransomware can do it without any communication. So that's not good. We've got a ton of active malware here. Some of these Trojans. I think we have some very traditional viruses here that have made a ton of copies of themselves. This is obviously a false positive, but the rest of it, yeah. Hmm. System updates.exe. Don't want to see that. But the funny thing is, Malwarebytes is still detecting stuff and he wants to restart. So you know what? I'm going to give it one more restart, let it do what it wants to do, and then we'll do one more scan and see if it's still a complete mess or if Malwarebytes successfully manages to block some of these viruses from causing their mayhem. Okay, so no, we did not boot into a clean system despite several attempts. It seems like malware is still active here. Malwarebytes is still detecting stuff. I'm guessing maybe it's not detecting one of the threats that are in memory that are creating all of these other samples. And that's probably why it's coming up with newer detections every time. But you know what? I'll do one more scan with Hitman Pro. We'll just take a look at the current state of the system and we'll call it. Because again, we're not trying to look at how good Malwarebytes is at removing threats from an already infected system. We were looking at if it's able to protect the system against an onslaught of malware, and so far it's not done too well. Funnily enough, we still have some ransomware. This is not active though. These are in program data, 
and our data is not encrypted. So it's possible that Malwarebytes partially protected us from some of these samples by intercepting some web traffic. But on the whole, this is not a great result. I think the biggest problem was letting this Trojan run wild. This is still active and I think it's still creating more samples, downloading more malware while doing what malware does. It's just a complete mess. Even though I don't think any of this is active anymore, it did successfully remove some of the infections that it let in. There's still active stuff. This is just not what you want to see. To get some perspective, I highly recommend checking out some of my other videos where I've tested products with exactly the same method. And trust me, it does not always pan out this way. You could say that the kind of infections we have on here are not as impactful as let's say financial malware, but I still think there's a lot of room for improvement. Overall, not a great result. But thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, let me know in the comment section below. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.